The Iron Cross is one of the most iconic and impressive skills in men's gymnastics. It's a truly awesome display of raw upper body strength and it's a skill recognised and respected even by people who know very little about gymnastics. Before starting to think about the cross, you should have a pretty solid strength training background already and there are a few lower level strength skills which you should be able to do first. My recommendation is that before working seriously towards the cross, you should be able to do at least five muscle ups in a row, be able to hold a solid support on rings for at least 45 seconds, and also already be able to do a simpler straight arm skill on rings, such as back lever or straddle plunge. If you can already do both, then that's even better. Throughout your journey towards the Iron Cross, there are two very important things to always bear in mind. Firstly, progress slowly. Your muscles and tendons don't adapt to this kind of training particularly quickly, so take your time with it and only progress once your body is ready. Never move on to harder variations until you have the previous steps mastered. Secondly, good form is absolutely essential. Straight arm exercises need to be done with locked straight arms, not even slightly bent ones. The Iron Cross places a lot of stress through your elbows and shoulders even at the best of times, but if your position is even slightly off, stress can be taken through the wrong body parts in the wrong ways. This not only means that you are kind of cheating yourself by training the muscles and tendons in the wrong way, but also means that weaker areas of your body are taking more stress than they should, dramatically increasing your risk of injury. My recommendation would be that to see good progress on this skill, you should work cross-specific exercises three to five times per week and work generic bent arm strength at least once a week alongside your specific training. Bent arm training is useful for protecting the elbows as well as just increasing your body's general strength. Here are a few examples of bent arm exercises which I found very useful throughout my cross training. Starting from the minimum strength requirements, if you train smartly and consistently and manage to avoid injury, it is realistic to expect to achieve this skill within 6 to 12 months, though some people may obviously learn it quicker and some people may need more time. Firstly, let's talk about the desired position for the cross. The cross, and indeed all of the straight arm cross drills, should be done with the arms locked straight, the elbows turned downwards such that you are feeling pressure through the bicep rather than through the side of the elbows. The arms should obviously be directly out to the side with the hands in line with the shoulders. The body should be tight and hollow and your chin up. According to the Fig Code of Points, if the angle of the arms is more than 45 degrees above or below the desired flat position, it does not count. However, even as much as 15 to 30 degrees of variation can be deductible by more than the actual value of the skill. So you should definitely strive to get it as level as possible if you plan to do this skill in a competition. Even if you don't, it's obviously far more impressive when performed correctly. There are lots of contraptions out there such as the Iron Cross Trainers and the Dream Machine which are extremely helpful in the learning of the cross. If you have access to one or both of these, that will definitely make things easier for you, but they are by no means essential. The Iron Cross Trainer is available online, though is fairly expensive, and a Dream Machine can be made fairly easily. But again, it may be more expensive than it is worth, depending on your priorities. If you do choose to use it, be careful not to overuse the Iron Cross Trainer. Although it is extremely useful for strengthening the chest and shoulders and getting a feel for the cross position, it is less effective at strengthening the elbows and the biceps due to the support it gives at the lower arm. I would always recommend doing some whole arm conditioning exercises alongside the Iron Cross Trainer to ensure that your elbow tendon strength continues to develop. I will now go through some beginner, intermediate and advanced cross drills which I found particularly useful in learning the cross for you to pick and choose from in your own training. As a guideline, you will most likely spend the first two to three months focusing mainly on the beginner exercises, the next two to three months on the intermediate exercises before turning your focus to the most advanced cross drills until you achieve the full skill. Say, 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 say
This is by no means an exhaustive list of all the exercises which can be done to strengthen the cross. These are just a few of my favourites. By all means, be creative, be resourceful, and see what else you can come up with. Equally, you don't have to do all of these exercises in order to achieve the cross either. But bear in mind that one of the key principles of strength training is that your muscles adapt most effectively when they're presented with a stimulus which they're not already accustomed to. I think if you tried to achieve the cross by only working one or two exercises, you would limit your progress a lot. By attacking the cross from as many different angles as possible, you should achieve a more well-rounded physical preparation for the skill. The cross is much easier if you are shorter and lighter, but with consistent training, it is possible for even very tall or heavy people. Although there is nothing you can do about your height, reducing your weight will definitely help you on your way to the cross by reducing the total load that you have to lift. You will inevitably gain a little bit of muscle in your upper body Body whilst working towards the cross, but reducing your body fat percentage as much as physically possible and not letting your legs become too muscular will definitely be beneficial for you. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it useful. If you did, be sure to like it, favourite it and share it with anyone else who you think might find it helpful. For more regular updates, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel um, and for even more videos and updates, make sure that you like my Facebook page and subscribe to my training YouTube channel. If you have any comments, suggestions or questions, please leave them below and I'll make sure that I get back to you. Thank you, hopefully see you again soon.